Hi guys and welcome to my channel. It's Hila here, Saturday Night Stitch, and today I am so excited to do this brow through for the October 2020 issue. There is such a fantastic story behind how I ended up getting this magazine so early and I'll share that in another video. I'll also do my sew implants in another video because there is so much stuff that I want to sew from this issue and this is fantastic. That being said, we're just going to dive right straight into it. So this is a special edition cover to celebrate the whole 70 years of Burda. And it's, it's a pretty beautiful cover. I love the gold, the luxurious feel with the white background and this really beautifully tailored top and she's wearing a hat why did women stop wearing hats honestly i think i think we should bring hats back because hats were so amazing just look at that and this also comes with like um a poster a two-sided a4 poster and again hats they look fabulous on it look at that yeah i think i think i'm gonna start collecting hats now and try and start wearing hats um and this is a card card poster definitely a collectible people love this um but here we go we've got this cover and it is absolutely beautiful we're going to dive straight into it because there is so much to talk about um in here so we've got here a very uh special uh intro with pictures of anne burda the woman who started it all the woman who wanted to bring glamour to the home seamstress and so she came up with the magazine idea fantastic and then we've got some vintage um ads which always add such a lovely touch and yeah so this is it 70 years of birda and it is amazing that they have managed to be around for 70 years consistently produce these sewing patterns and i've always said that i do respect the amount of work and effort that goes into creating 12 issues every single year and still trying to keep people inspired with sewing i think that they do a fabulous job of it right first off we've got jacket number 116 and boom wow what an awesome jacket beautiful feminine fit with the dots that you have at the back and the center back seam and you've got that super wide collar this very much reminds me of that whole new look feel aesthetic to it and they've used a beautiful wool in keeping with um autumn months and look at those gigantic pocket flaps here points for the pattern matching across the pocket flaps and the main uh, part beautiful tailoring this is a three dot pattern definitely something to do if you want to up your sewing skills and this is definitely this is saying we respect the advanced seamstresses who want to do something that's a little bit more challenging because i had a look at the pattern pieces for this and this is definitely a challenging um piece if you wanted to go ahead and make this but oh, just a beautiful stunning and then we've got this was the original um line drawing the original illustration from the magazine that it came from so these are from vintage birder uh, birder magazines but what's awesome about it is because Berda has moved to this point where they now offer the same pattern in multiple sizes it's the vintage pattern but you have it in a size 36 to 44 in the original vintage magazines they are only available either in one size or a couple of sizes so that's awesome um, absolutely awesome and then we've got some more information on fashion throughout the ages and how Berda has played a role in trying to bring these uh you know movie star glamour and all that to the ordinary woman which has always been and had always been Anne Birder's uh, dream for the magazine and then we've got a beautiful stylish pencil skirt midi length and I have no doubt that the tailoring and the drafting and the fit on this would just be absolutely fabulous love it and then you've got some famous names uh from you know the I think the German uh, film industry who have been involved with Birder and they're sort of talking about their history with Birder Oh, because it's got such a strong history since it started in Germany. And so most people, they, they know about it as a sewing magazine. And then you've got a quiz, which is a fun thing. I even tried doing the quiz using Google Translate. I only got something like two out of ten, which, which is better than nothing. And then we have this beautiful dress here. I love, love this dress so much. The glamour of it, the effortless elegance and 
look at how the silhouette celebrates the female shape i just I, I'm, I'm utterly smitten with this i love the slightly voluminous sleeves with the cuff and then you've got like the pleating detail over here beautiful and again why did we stop wearing hats we need to wear hats and pockets it's got some uh, welt pockets over here because pockets are everything you know pockets are pretty awesome it's been made with a pencil skirt so this is one of those things that i definitely want to make although for me to make this fit my everyday life I wouldn't make it into a pencil skirt because I do find pencil skirts, much as I love the silhouette, they are quite restrictive for me in my busy lifestyle where I have to be running around after five kids and stuff. So I would probably give this a gentle A-line flare, I guess. I don't know. I'm still, oh, but I love, I love this top and I love the execution that they made for it. And there's the original drawing from the original Vintage Bird magazine beautiful and this is available in a size 36 to 44 um and i'm just grateful that they're making these available in all of these sizes and then you've got the fashion catwalk inspiration for it fabulous and let's talk about those shoes how awesome are these shoes i love them love the shoes i also love the styling that they do in birda definitely i do find it inspiring and then we also have a little section on how the kids patterns have evolved and you've got the diagrams there from the vintage stuff so this is really celebrating the 70 years of birda and then we have this coat oh i love this coat it is so 1950s with the belt and it's got the flare it goes in at the waist it's got a one piece sleeve which again this is another you know th this is another fantastic it's almost like an easter egg for the advanced seamstresses who want to do something that's just a little bit more challenging and this will definitely give you a challenge i'm going to show you the line drawings and the pattern pieces for this because this is another one that i wanted to make um, but I realize that it's going to be a longer term project because it does look a little bit complex, but it would be so worth it. I love the use of the fur trim on the collar and on those slanted welt pockets. Again, beautiful. And there's the original and there's some suggestions of fabrics that you can use for it. But this is the sort of thing that you make and it will last you a lifetime. And then we move towards the glitz and glamour of Hollywood with this shawl collar dress. Oh, it's a full wrap dress at the top and you've got the uh, shawl collar this would be so perfect actually for a new year's eve dress and i love this overskirt detail actually i had never thought of doing this but it's got these side panels that are just sewn onto a belt it's that's what it is it's a belt but it's got some swag off of that because when you walk with this these are kind of like you've got a cape below it gives your 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 stride some beautiful movement to it and i was just like i see you Berta. i like that i'm definitely gonna try that i love this concept of the belt with the swishy skirts just to give yourself that flow because i do love things that move with you so again beautiful elegant elegant dress and i have a feeling that this one is going to be quite popular um, within the sewing community i think that most of the styles are going to be quite popular to be honest with you but there we go oh, and there's the original drawing i do i do love these vintage style illustrations as you can see here back in the day when this was released this would have only been available in a 46 and a 48 but with the re-releases that Berta are doing this will be available from a size 36 to a 44 and then we've got a little bit more on the role that Anne Berda played within the international fashion world in this uh Carl Lagerfeld who did some designing for Berda for a little bit and then you've got there Christy Turlington who was one of the supermodels I remember her with Naomi and Claudia Schiffer just being like the epitome of the modeling world and this little bit is about how Berda was one of the first western magazines to be allowed into communist um russia and in china as well which i think is a pretty amazing feat and it was the first one to go beyond the iron curtain which probably explains why Berda is very popular in russia even to this day past covers using movie stars and tv stars and how fabulous do these look hats we need to bring back hats, people. 
Yep. And then we've got this a beautiful top with some pin tuck details. Now this is definitely kind of like a New Year's Eve rah -rah kind of top. Although you could easily make this every day by removing the flouncy top, uh, the flouncy collar if you didn't want that. And removing the flouncy sleeves um, over here and just sort of like leaving it at the band and you could have um, a daily wear item and I have no doubt that this would make a really lovely daily wear blouse especially because of those pin tuck details at the shoulder yoke. I would love to make this in maybe a cotton poplin so something that's a little bit sturdier so that the volume of those sleeves and that the pin tucks the pleats that you get from the pin tucks would really stand out so something like a poplin would work really well for me or even a cotton lawn um yeah so i think that i do think that this yeah i think that this has got a lot of potential because you could lengthen this into a dress as well but yeah love it love it and then you've got one blouse three looks how you could style this with jeans or with a blazer or wear it with a pencil skirt fabulous stuff and then oh do you know over the last two months Berda is making it difficult for me to decide which coat pattern or which jacket pattern i should sew because i love this it's a trench coat style but it's in a fluid drapey fabric i mean when i first saw this i actually thought that this might be a pointy a jersey and i was blown away by the idea of actually having a mac style um jacket but in a pointy but it isn't it's actually um a wool you know and it still looks fabulous i love the hood i i'm a in winter i use hoodies a lot so i just love it but everything about this it's got the kimono sleeve it's got the gun flap going over there i'm not even sure how you would sew this up but i want to try i want to bring my sewing level up to a point where i can do stuff like this and when a magazine does that for me that's like you know double a star and there's the original drawing for it. And in the drawing, I couldn't help but think of, you know, the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle Sherlock Holmes books from back in the Victorian era. You'll find that most of the drawings, he's wearing something kind of like this. So I was like, ah, awesome. And then we have a lipstick section. Ah, oh, and another absolutely lovely I must make dress. I love this pinafore style dress. It's got a definite 50s classic style to it. Buttons, statement buttons. You had me at statement buttons. You had me at lovely large size pockets. Everything about this, I just, I love it so much. And it's one of the things that's on my top list of absolutely must sew. I need to dig through my wools to see what I could use to make this and this is available in a size 36 to 44 and you could easily make this for for summer by using a cotton sateen for instance or even a linen fabric like a stonewashed linen this is such a versatile <laughs> A pattern that just gets me so excited to you know jump into it and even you, you could just do it as a skirt without these panels over here yeah, I, you know, by the time I got to this page, I was just like, wow, wow, wow. And there's the original um, illustration um, from back in when it was actually uh, initially released. And so, wow, love it. Just basically everything about this issue, I absolutely love. And this is like a really lovely letter, basically just saying thank you to everybody for supporting us, for having you know bought our magazine and for sewing with us and i gotta say the sentiment um the well wishes and the well-being and the goodwill that's coming from the editors and the team that's involved with this is very evident in what they've done with it and then once we get past like the vintage special we move into um the other stuff and this is kind of like a yoga based uh thing and we have here a um simple top with an elasticated with a drawstring waist and the sleeves also have a drawstring um, at the sleeve end so it's made in in jersey and it's got a simple crew neck uh, top over there and it does have some shaping by form of some bust darts 
And I'd always say that when you're working with jersey and you've got darts, you kind of have to really practice on a scrap of scrap piece of fabric first, just to make sure that you're not stretching them out. Because the last place you want is a wavy seam around your bust where the shaping is. But I think it's fantastic that it's got some shaping and it's got a little bit of a hem whereby a woven fabric has been added to it i mean personally i think it's a little bit fussy adding that sort of stuff because i think it is a lovely style um overall so yeah i think that it's a good start to the normal ones and then we have oh it's almost as if Berta was reading my mind because i've been thinking that i do need to make myself a summer weight house coat or morning gown because the ones that i have are winter ones and i need um something that i can wear especially during the hot and humid days and then i saw this and i was like boom i'm going to be making this in a size 44 and this is going to be fabulous so yeah so i think that this is a great useful pattern and it's also got a hoodie as well which is pretty awesome i would make that in like a silk satin and then we've got a simple top with an extra wide neck although you can't tell it from the line drawing the line drawing makes it look like that neck isn't quite as wide but it is quite a wide neck but it's got raglan sleeves and it's been made in a really lovely classy fabric here extra wide cuffs are always such a great thing love it it's got a very nice relaxed -y feel to it and then we have some really interesting looking dropped crotch um yoga pants now drop crotch yoga pants are kind of like uh, marmite i think you either love them or you hate them there's nothing more to be said about that what i do like about these ones is that they do have pockets they've got a hip yoke pocket and i like the extra wide band that they have going on the waist there so they look like they would be very comfortable and then we've got a jersey top that's crossover and it's kind of like got this um tucked in tucked under look a little bit of pleating over here to give it more of a blousy volume. Uh, not as much of a fan as this, I have to say. I think I prefer the first one with the wider neck. But I can see how this would be very comfortable uh, for people. Absolutely. But you, in the picture, she's actually wearing it with a cami. Because it does look like you could easily expose yourself if you didn't want to. Um, an easy fix around that would be obviously to just do a snap to put a little snap over here if you didn't want to have to wear it with a cami but overall i think a good start with some decent active wear options and then you've got a simple hoodie dress over here which is being used as a i want to say a beach cover-up i guess because she's by the pool and she's wearing it and she's testing the water so i'm imagining that she's going to be like okay the water is warm enough and then she'll whip that off and she's got her swimming costume underneath that's what I'm picturing. So I'm picturing this being made in like a toweling fabric. Yeah. And then we've got that crossover top again. And this time it's been made in a viscose jersey. So it's got a little bit more drape to it. And you've got that dropped crotch. You, you really get a better sense of how the dropped crotch is on this particular picture here. And as I said, this is the sort of thing that you either love or you hate. It's a marmite kind of thing, um, basically. <laughs> And we've got the dressing gown again, but this time it's been made in a white, kind of like a waffle jersey or a PK, which I associate with spas that I have been to a grand total of one time because I was gifted to me when I was pregnant and I went there the one time and they had all of these fancy looking white um, things. So I would never make mine in white because white kind of scares me very much. <laughs> Again, then we've got an editorial on some beauty stuff. And then we move on to this lovely dress here. I love everything about this dress. I love the fabric. It's the paisley print fabric. Perfect autumnal colors on the fabric as well. And it's got princess seams at the front. And these the teeniest, the teeniest, tiniest little cap sleeves. And I love it. I want to make this dress. It is available in sizes 34 to 42 and I quite like the fact that it's got a pleat here where it meets up with the princess seam you can't really see the princess seam because the fabric is busy but this is gorgeous I love this and then dress number 112 is a simple dress with a boat neckline I quite like a boat neckline it's got some bust dust for some minimal shaping and then we've got kind of like a, a fall wrap over style at the front with the belt if you wanted to create a more fitted look 
and again beautiful autumnal look and feel to it because she's wearing leggings and a trainer so this is basically kind of like uh, the look that I want to have this autumn leggings and a nice dress that I can layer with a turtleneck the only thing that's missing for me here is the turtleneck but you know she probably doesn't suffer from poor circulation like I do so she doesn't need it okay and then we've got a lovely shirt dress here with kind of like what looks like a slightly curved um, waistband okay so the line drawing doesn't actually show a curved waistband but if you look in the picture it does look like it's quite curved so um, I went to check and it's supposed to be straight, but it's probably because of the viscous fabric that they use. So um, probably the volume of the skirt, because it's a gathered skirt, is kind of possibly just pulling this down a little bit, um, which shouldn't be a problem if the waistband fits you perfectly. So um, yeah, so this one was just a little bit uh, confusing for me when I looked at it, but then the line drawing and the sewing instructions actually cleared it up for me so fabulous i would make this again by the way i totally would love the paisley print and then we've got a simple pullover style uh, being in which i love the realization when i first saw the line drawing i was just like yeah meh but then i saw the fabric that they used and i was like oh yeah i could get down with that <laughs> absolutely it looks like it would be a great uniform like a great school run uniform with your jeans just get yourself some lovely beautiful french terry fabric to make like this sort of oversized style jumper and boom, you're good to go throw on a scarf and a bobbly hat, put on some Uggs and your Instagram perfect, as I say. And it's also a super easy pattern, so pretty awesome. This is also on my list of, you know, if I had all the time in the world and I could sew, I would be sewing that. In fact, I, actually, I kind of feel like I would be sewing everything in this issue. <laughs> okay, and then we've got this blouse top, again, in a paisley print. Absolutely beautiful. And we have the frill down the placket. You don't always have to go with the frill if you don't want to. Um, but it's got bust dust and it's just got minimal fitting. And it's a simple mandarin collar. And I've styled it with this patent leather A-line skirt. Beautiful. And then you've got snakeskin belt. Fantastic. And then we have our girl here. <laughs> I love this. I love this image so much because it just reminds me of dancing. And it's kind of like she's dancing, but it's kind of like a, a bit of a dad dance move. <laughs> so <laughs> I had a bit of a giggle when I saw this, but a giggle in like a happy way. And I do love it. Um, and I think what this picture does convey is that you can move in these trousers and it's kind of showing you how they are wide leg trousers here. I wouldn't have personally gone with a black turtleneck. I think a burgundy turtleneck would have made this pop so much better. So if you imagine if this was burgundy and then you had the teal over here, it would have just been pow. pow, pow. But yeah, it's uh, good. And again, I was surprised by this. I would actually have a go at making these. They look very simple. They've got an elasticated waist. And so I was like, huh, okay, I, I, I could I could do that. Um, and then we have, oh, this really fabulous, fabulous looking poncho, which is basically like, a, it looks like a blanket, but it's more stylish than a blanket. And I love that because I like to wear blankets in winter because they do get cold. And I know I bang on about this a lot, but it's a big big driver in what I can wear during winter so I quite like that and I'm definitely going to go to fabrics for all and see if I can find a fabric that I could make into this um, even with the tassels and everything because this is the sort of thing that I'd probably be wearing as I am going outside so I don't have to worry too much about tassels getting in the way if I'm trying to wash my hands or do any cooking or anything like that I would wear this as is separately how far because of those shoes I mean I wouldn't wear these shoes but mm, yeah definitely um, shoes and then we have a really lovely looking simple jacket um, in the Chanel style tradition in that it's um, it doesn't wrap over or anything like that beautiful fabric that they used there it's a really wonderful jacquard and jacquard fabrics I love how they sew they took a stitch so beautifully and it's got tiny little non-functional pockets come on make those pockets bigger and functional or make them ornamental but uh, they get points for pattern matching though you can see that um, everything's been pattern matched across there with this cute little um, tassel trim anyway 
Moving on from that, we have a really simple dress over here with a boat neckline, big, deep pleat down that center front skirt. And then you've got two pleats at the bottom. It doesn't have any closures, so this would make it perfect for beginners, so you don't have to worry about putting in any closures. And it's a loose fit, and you can tell that it's a loose fit by how it looks on the model itself, and even by how it doesn't have any shaping on the waist at on the line drawing so I think that this is going to be a popular one I wouldn't mind making this so that just as they've shown it here I can layer it under a turtleneck with some tights on there although she doesn't look like she's wearing any leggings or any tights huh yeah I'd be wearing leggings but I just love this whole look as it is with the turtleneck and the dress layered over it and the boots and then you've got like this extra long cardi by the way, I'm looking for a sewing pattern for an extra long um, cardigan with pockets. This one doesn't have pockets, but I wanted to have pockets. So if you've got any suggestions, let me know in the comments box down below. Assuming you've watched until this far. But yeah, there we go. And then we have a skirt. Oh, lovely silhouette skirt. I do like my A-line skirts. And they've used this sh beautiful fabric. It kind of looks like a jacquard, but it might not be a jacquard. But if you... It's got like these really lovely hip pockets and they've used a trim on this. So this is one that I've also added onto my, oh, I would love to sew this if I had all the time in the world. This is the featured sewing lesson, the blouse with the frilly jabot along the um, button placket. It's always worth kind of reading through this to get an idea of how birds do their sewing stuff because they tend to use the same sort of technique um, over and over. And then they've gone with the uh, showing us the trend of the green slash teal because I think according to Vogue and Harper's Bazaar this is supposed to be the color of autumn winter 2020 and then we've got that jacket again but this time it's in a jacquard which has got like this crumply texture to it and in the Chanel fashion you've got the trim it's got a beautiful velvety trim here lovely absolutely lovely the dress this time in a viscose crepe and it's kind of like got a monochrome feel to it cute addition of the um little vest it kind of gives it a bit of an 80s vibe when you pair it with the shoes that she's wearing here but again it could work i can see this being a popular pattern simply because it doesn't have any closures and you can just throw it on over your turtleneck and your leggings this is a tall pattern, by the way, so it means it's available in sizes 72 and 88. And so you probably need to do just a little bit of adjusting with the length, but otherwise it would have the same bust and hip measurements, but it's just that it's drafted for taller people. And then we've got that beautiful looking jumper, but this time it's in a, a knitted, what looks like it's knitted. And I think this is a great way of cheating. Now, I knit, but I'm not very patient enough to make things like this because it takes forever because with knitting you're actually making the fabric and then you're trying to get it to fit and then you have to do all sorts of things and all that but a great cheat is just getting the fabric that looks like it's been knitted and so it kind of looks like it's um it's knitted but yeah separately this whole um photo shoot styling that they have is pretty fabulous it kind of slightly reminds me of the movie ford v ferrari which is a fantastic film if you haven't watched it which is about racing cars and things like that and um they look like they're shooting in a racing track and they're using the fancy sports cars that are referenced in that movie so yeah that's quite nice okay boat line boat neckline so beautiful the tailoring the sewing on this is just immaculate absolutely immaculate because this is a silk satin and silk satin is very unforgiving of mistakes love it absolutely beautiful and beautiful color as well i feel like trying to find something of this color because i just love the way that it's popping and oh her uh, her sunglasses game is top <laughs> notch wow um okay so okay i'm just starting over here now because that's where i'm at so we've got that skirt again and this time it's got a panel on the bottom and it's been made in kind of like a velour suede style fabric and it's got this belt which is sewn on actually it's a trim it looks like it's a grow grain trim and then you add on this uh, little ornamental buckle 
beautiful and the pairing of it with this uh, top as well absolutely fabulous it's got the volume over there but then you go um, tucked in minimalist at the waist fantastic and those sunglasses as i've said she's like ready to go into the matrix and then we have got a pussy bow blouse or a secretary blouse i don't know what they're called but it's got the tie in built and you've got the elasticated band at the waist and i think this is how you show off a you know um, the details of the pattern she's got her arms up here it looks very stylish very high fashion but we're also seeing the detail of the uh, sleeve and we're also seeing the arm side i think that that's fantastic it's absolutely beautiful hmm. i love it okay and then we've got a dress which is in lace you know i've always wanted to make a lace dress it's one of those things that's on my list of something that i'll try when the kids have grown up and flown the nest <laughs> but beautiful colors again it's got some princess uh, seam lines ah oh, really fantastic stuff going on in this issue and then that's the featured sewing lesson and it's always good to see the more complex patterns being the featured sewing lessons because then they're catering to the advanced seamstresses who know what they are doing and we've got a styling section here of how you might wear that skirt with the panel and it looks absolutely beautiful with a cowl neck top over here fantastic and it's the junior fashion editor that's fantastic. It's always nice to put a face to the name. So then the kids section, another reason why I'm absolutely gaga over this is because the kids section actually covers my children's heights because it's uh, focused on 116 to 140. My twins are 122 centimeters. And so this is definitely the bubble for my kids and every single thing of the kids patterns is something that I would make. It's something that the kids would wear. So we've got a simple turtleneck need those for winter we've got lovely trousers which can be unisex they're modeled here by the boy but girls can absolutely wear these because they're simple straight leg and they've got the practical pants i'd probably skip the back pockets so long as they've got the the practical pockets at the front and then you've got the skirt which looks like an a-line skirt and it's got pockets on it as well and all of these are super easy patterns and then you've got a simple top with some flouncy details on the shoulder over here and a knitted jersey, um, a knitted pullover pattern in a Norwegian style um, thingy, yoke, a Norwegian style yoke thingy. But again, every single thing I would make for the kids and every single thing I would make um, for myself, which is why this video has gone on for so long, because there's literally so much in here that I want to make. And I'm so excited to be digging in to my um stash to find out how i can you know to see what fabrics i can dig up in order to make some of uh, these things so yeah love love this issue i i can't even begin to express how much i love this issue i kind of feel like this is the issue that has made this whole year <laughs> worth it I mean, just looking down this line of all of the 70 year celebration patterns, beautiful, gorgeous, stunning. And you've got some beautiful yoga wear, very practical morning gown. And you've got all of these lovely autumn style dresses and garments. I think that this is going to be a super popular issue and I think that it is a collectible issue. I mean, it shouldn't be possible given that I thought that 9 2020 was an outstanding issue and this has just surpassed it and it, it shouldn't be possible. But yet here we are and I can't really help but appreciate how really good this editorial is. This isn't just a celebration of what has been accomplished over 70 years, right? This has been uh, 70 years of Berda trying to create something that home seamstresses could use to make garments that they can be proud of, garments that people can be enamored with. And, you know, they give it the space and the quality to shine. These are incredible designs and the editorials are combined with 
the high quality drafting and high quality use of fabrics to support the idea, to support the vision. And all of this, right, it takes time, talent, effort, and passion. And I think that British should be really proud of themselves. Sewing and fashion, they are a really tough balance. But I think that throughout the years, Berda have shown that they adapt one way or another. And during the past seven decades, Berda have proved that it has got remarkable staying power, even as it has evolved. And Berda 10 2020 is no exception. And I feel like this issue is an event, like it's a triumph, and that each person who has been involved in creating this issue deserves a pat on the back. I mean, this has been a several months path to an incredible peak. Over the past few months, they've been feeding us snippets of the vintage styles of the behind the scenes stuff. And everything has peaked to this. And I don't know about you guys, but as a fan, I couldn't be more impressed with the task that they had of celebrating 70 years of murder. And I got to say to Brenda, thank you so much for making something so awesome, something that makes me feel inspired to go into my sewing cave and create something that makes me feel inspired to pick up my precious fabrics and cut into them, you know. And also, I just want to say thank you all um, for watching my videos. I can't wait to cover the Brenda 80th anniversary because this magazine has been just worth it uh, for me and, and I love it when Brenda do stuff like this absolutely love it here are more details about jacket 115 beautiful jacket over here and these are all of the pattern pieces that need to be traced out and then you'll need some lining as well and this is the cutting layout so a lot of pattern pieces but it would definitely be worth it and that lovely jacket 116 the first one that you get to see in this issue these are the pattern pieces that you have to trace out and there's a little bit extra here on how you would actually put in that weld pocket flap you'd have to cut into the actual pattern piece itself to sew up the dart that then also joins up with the weld pocket piece so great stuff calling all the advanced seamstresses we are sorted with this issue as you can see here this is the pleating for dress number 120 it out with the pleating. I cannot wait to make this. 